Hong Kong means fragrant harbour, and we can trace its story back to something else that's fragrant. Tea. Oh, and drugs. In the 1800s, the British were obsessed with tea, much like today, really. Britain bought a lot of tea from China, but China wasn't buying much in return. So, to make money, the British smuggled opium into China. Millions became addicted. And that led to the first opium war, which China lost. The Treaty of Nanjing ended the war in 1842. It meant giving up a piece of land to the British. That was Hong Kong Island, at the time just a small fishing village. After the Second Opium War, Britain got part of the Kowloon Peninsula. And finally, it got the new territories, this time on a 99-year lease. Chairman Mao takes the big parade. The 20th century saw China embrace communism, while Hong Kong's capitalist economy boomed. One country, two systems. Fast forward to 1984. That 99-year deadline was coming up, so Britain and China signed an agreement on Hong Kong's future. As a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China, Hong Kong will maintain its economic system and way of life for 50 years after the 1st of July, 1997. And come 1997, Hong Kong was handed back to China. Now, Hong Kong people are to run Hong Kong. The promise of one country, two systems was designed to give Hong Kong a high level of autonomy until 2047. Hong Kong has its own legal and banking systems. People there use the Hong Kong dollar. And it has its own mini constitution called the Basic Law. It sets out things like keeping Hong Kong's capitalist way of life and protecting rights like freedom of speech. Well, it's these rights and freedoms that many people in Hong Kong are worried about. They think they are being eroded long before the 50-year guarantee is up. <laughs>